Hello and welcome to the shop. I recently made two videos where I turned the chaos blanks that I produced in, a, in another video. And I gave the viewers an opportunity to vote on which of the chaos blanks and which style of pen they would like to see me make. And it, it was really a lot of fun for me, for me. And I think it was better for me to let you choose uh, because that's what you guys want to see. Um, after I turned those videos, I got a lot of comments and a lot of people uh, getting back to me and saying, hey, one of the options was to turn a one-piece mechanical pencil. I'd really like to see how you do that. Now, I know that I've done this once, maybe twice before in the past. I don't remember, but I'm happy to do it again because it's a really fun kit to turn. What I have here is a comfort mechanical pencil kit, and I got this from Penn State. It's been in my shop for oh my gosh, several years, uh, before I moved into this shop, I do believe, and you'll notice it has two uh, blanks down on the bottom. It's normally a two-piece kit. What I do is I order these 10-inch long 7-millimeter tubes, and I also got this from Penn State, and I've had these for a long time as well, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this tube, and we're going to use this kit, and we are going to turn a one-piece solid blank mechanical pencil today. I'd like to start this video off by giving you the part numbers of the mechanical pencil kit that I'll be using. It is PKCFPCLBT, as well as the tubes, and these are PKT7-10, and you get 10 of these tubes. They're 7 millimeters, and they are 10 inches in length, and once again, I did get both the mechanical pencil kit and the tubes from Penn State. The first thing we need to do is get our tube cut to the proper length. Now this particular mechanical pencil kit comes with two independent tubes. They are identical in length and if we use a ruler we can see that each tube is going to be two inches. So we right off the bat know that we need four inches of length on the primary tube. If we go ahead and cut this to four inches we're going to come up too short. You've got to remember that those two independent tubes are pressed into this center band. And this center band is actually 1.6 inches. So we need to add that to our four inches. I set my calipers to 4.160 inches, and now we want to mark our tube. Now notice that pencil mark. We are exactly 4.160, and the pencil mark is going to be less than that. So what I'm going to do is come back, and I'm going to go to the right of the pencil mark, and I'm going to just fatten the tube up a little bit. And the beauty of it is, once we cut this tube, I can always take it over to my sander, and I can clean it up and take it back to the perfect dimension. I use this little pipe cutter that I picked up at the big box store for cutting my tubes. There are many ways to cut a tube and there really is no wrong way. I'm just going to set it in there and I'm going to tighten this down. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm right on the, the larger line or the second line that I drew. I tighten it down and I'm going to spin it a little bit. And as I spin it, I just keep tightening the knob. And what this is going to do, this little wheel is eating into this soft brass tube. And eventually, after a couple of twists, it will cut the tube. There we go. Now, one thing I want to point out is on the end of this tube, notice how it is um, sort of rounded over a little bit. As that cuts, it sort of curves the tube in. It, it, it's, it's bending the tube as it's cutting it. Let me show you how I straighten that out. I have a set of pin disassembly punches. Now, I got these from Penn State. You can pick them up a lot of times at the big box stores. This is a seven millimeter punch. And if I put it into the end of the tube, you can see that it will not, it will not poke through because this tube is rounded over. What I like to do is grab one size down from seven millimeter. I'll poke it through the end of the tube by tapping it with a hammer. There we go. Then we can lay it on a hard surface let me get this tube out of the way. And I just like to roll and tap. Now I can take the seven millimeter tube, put into the end, see how it goes all the way through? But I just wanna tap it a few times. And the idea is just to kind of clean up the end of the tube. Now with that tube cleaned up, we're gonna head over to our disc sander 
and we're going to sand this down to exactly 4.160 inches. My calipers are still set to 4.160 inches. If I put my tube on the calipers, you can see that it is a bit long. What we're gonna do, I've put the seven millimeter tube into my sanding jig. We're just going to take a little bit off at a time until it gets to the perfect length. You don't want to get aggressive with this step because you can take a lot of material away really fast. You can see I'm quite a bit closer. We, we took about half of the material away. We're just going to give it a touch. And now we have the perfect length tube. What I'm using is a PK seven millimeter, five and a half inch high speed, seven millimeter drill bit. I got this from Penn State Woodworking. I have some blanks that were sent to me by Jeff Norris over at OzarkWoodWagon.com. You can pause the video and get his contact information. I'm gonna use a beautiful stabilized sassafras blank that he sent me. For sake of saving time, I've already cut it to the proper length and I'm ready to go ahead and drill it and tube it. I have my bit in the Jacobs chuck and I went ahead and put it as far up into the chuck as I could to kind of choke up on it. This distance is not enough to drill all the way through my blank, but with these longer bits, they tend to flex a little bit and I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm going to start the hole and drill as far as I can into the blank and then we'll make adjustments of the bit and the blank to finish drilling the hole. To finish this blank, I went ahead and rechucked the bit so that it extends just past the end of the blank. We're going to put the blank onto the bit, then we're going to re-grab it in the chuck, and we're ready to finish drilling. Now I did drop the blank down a little bit, and my hope is by doing that, um, I'll be able to bring the chips up and out of the blank. We may have to pause and empty the blank if the chips don't come out, because if you pack those chips in there, it's gonna build heat and it could cause your blank to explode. Okay guys, good news and bad news. The good news is I got the blank drilled and it looks great on both ends. The bad news is I forgot to hit the record button so you didn't get to see me drill the remainder of this blank. What I did is I inserted the blank onto the drill bit and then I clamped it into the vise, making sure that the sticker was pointing in the exact same direction that it was when I drilled the initial hole. You wanna do that because let's say your blank is not quite straight. It's a little bit cocked one way or the other. If I start drilling this away down through the blank and then I flip the blank around, I'm gonna go in at a different angle, which is gonna wallow that hole out and give me a hole much larger than I need. The other thing that I did is I drilled a little over a quarter of an inch into the blank, and since the bit wasn't carrying the chips out, I stopped, pulled it off of the bit, and I tapped it to empty the tubes. I did that three times uh, during the drilling process. Now you'll notice I went in through the center of the blank on the start end, but I came out off center on the bottom. There's a couple of things that could have caused that. Number one, notice how this bit will flex. It could be that there was flex in the bit. Number two, there are some knots down here. I could have hit one of these knots and it could have caused the bit to careen off a little bit because the wood would have been harder. And number three, it could be that this blank maybe is not perfectly square. If your blank is a, is a little off square, it will cause your hole to go down the blank at a bit of an angle. Uh, I look at that hole and it, it looks great. This is a slimline style pin. That's plenty of material. We'll have no trouble turning this into a gorgeous pin. Now the next place I'm gonna head is over to my glue up table. I'm gonna get my tube glued into here. I'm not gonna show that process. Essentially what I'll do is scratch the tube up and I'm gonna use some medium CA glue and we're going to glue our tube into this blank. And then I'm gonna take it over to my disc sander. I'm gonna square the ends of the blank and the next time you see this blank, we will be at the lathe ready to turn. I've got the blank chucked up on the lathe. The glue has had plenty of time 
to dry. I am using turn between center uh, bushings as opposed to a mandrel, but you could just as easily do this on a mandrel. This is one incredible looking blank. Just take a look at that. I'm gonna go ahead now, I've got it down to the bushings on both the, both ends. We're gonna go ahead and start with our sandpaper, 120, uh, then uh, we'll do 220, uh, 340, and 400. We'll take a look at how it looks. Uh, I actually am not going to show the sanding. I mean, pretty much I'm gonna rub the paper back and forth on the blank. Um, you'll have some circular scratches, so I'll shut the lathe off and then I'll rub the paper back and forth like this to take the circular scratches out before advancing to the next grade. But once it's sanded, I'll come show it to you before I put a finish on it. I just finished sanding this blank down to 400 grit. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have also cleaned it with denatured alcohol and it has had plenty of time to dry. It is ready now uh, to start applying a CA finish. This will kind of give you a sneak peek how this one's going to look. Isn't that beautiful? You can see the CA is already starting to dry. It's extremely humid and hot out here in the shop. So it's going to take a little longer than normal to dry. But I'm just going to let the lathe spin. And uh, we'll get about five coats of thin on there. And then we'll start applying our medium to really level the blank and build the finish. I'll come back when I've got the finish on the blank. We'll take a peek at it. And then we'll get it buffed up. I'd like to stop the lathe for a minute and show you guys how this blank is looking. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've got uh, four coats of medium on top of five coats of thin, and I think we're just about ready to start micro meshing. I'll come back and show you what it looks like when I'm finished with the micro mesh. I just finished with the micro mesh, and I want you to take a look at that blank, how beautiful it is. It just, it just shines, it's incredible. I'm gonna go ahead now I'm going to apply a little bit of Renaissance wax and then I'll get my buffing wheels on the lathe and I'll go ahead and buff this blank up and uh, I won't go through that process. I've done it in so many videos. What I'll do is once I get it buffed, I'll meet you guys over at the table and we'll get this pressed into a kit. I was going to make you wait until I press this into a pin kit, but I just couldn't resist. Take a look at that blank. Man, does that thing pop. All right, let's go press this into a kit. Assembly of the one piece mechanical pencil kit is really simple. First thing we're gonna do is set aside the center band because we didn't use two tubes and we won't need this. I'm ready to press the mechanical pencil together and I'm gonna start by pressing the clip end in first. And the reason why is this little brass ferrule that goes in the front end, uh, if you press that in first, you stand a chance at damaging it while you're pressing the, the clip assembly in. So we'll start with the back end. I brought my my bushing over. This is my turn between center bushing, and I'm going to slide it into the front of the of the uh, mechanical pencil blank. And the idea is I don't want to damage the uh, front of the blank. So we'll open up our clamp here. I'll slide the. Now this has a little hole in it, the cap, because that's what the back of the pen or the mechanical pencil. I keep wanting to call it a pen, but uh, that's where you use to press the plunger to uh, extend your ink. Wow, I don't know what's that. I guess we'll put this on this. I don't know. That's, yeah, we'll put it right there to kind of, I don't want to hide anything. This pin is so beautiful all the way around. I'm going to start that by hand as best as I can. Okay, we'll pop that in there. Press her together. Beautiful pin. This just protects the, protects the wood. Now let's go press that little ferrule in the front end. 
you want to take a close look at this piece. It's got a small end and a larger end. The larger end is what gets pressed into the front of the blank. And let me turn this thing around like this. Okay. There we go. And you just press it in until it stops. It has a little lip on it. And I'll bring that up and show you the lip. And you just press it into that little lip, hits the blank. Got a nice fit at the clip. Looks good up front. Let's finish assembling this, this uh, mechanical pencil. The next step is you take the cartridge, slide it into the back of the blank, and we thread the nib section on. And there's our, our ink or our mechanical lead get you a better shot of this. That is a real beaut. I love it. I'd really like to thank you for joining me tonight for this video. I hope you enjoyed the turning of this mechanical pencil. This was a lot of fun for me to turn. I know a lot of you guys have a daily carry that is an ink pen. For me, my daily carry is a mechanical pencil. Uh, I have one of these that is just beat to heck and back. I use it every day and I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with this one. I, I don't know that I'm going to retire mine just yet because I'm really kind of attached to it. But uh, these are fun to make. And the, the thing I like about these, if you've ever made the mechanical pencil and you've got that, that center band in there, since you press it together from both sides, if you put this in your pocket, it can bend. They break relatively easily. Uh, not to mention, I like it better because if I would have cut this blank, look at the center. That, that's what I would have missed. And with making a one piece, you just get so much, you get such a better peek at the entire blank. I would really like to thank you for joining me tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. You come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.